friends in this video we will be preparing copper 1 and copper 2 chloride first of all let us make copper 2 chloride for this preparation we take 5 grams of copper carbonate and 5 milliliters of 36 percentage hydrochloric acid dissolved to 40 ml distilled water we start by pouring the diluted hydrochloric acid into the copper carbonate on adding the hydrochloric acid, we see vigorous fizzing and that's why we add the hydrochloric acid slowly into the beaker and not all at once. What's happening here is copper carbonate reacts with two molecules of hydrochloric acid to form copper 2 chloride, carbon dioxide gas and water. We mix it up well with the help of a glass steering rod in order to complete the reaction. After everything is reacted, we are left with this green colored solution and that is the copper 2 chloride in solution. Now we heat the solution to dryness to obtain the solid copper 2 chloride. It is not possible to crystallize the compound by saturating the solution and allowing it to cool. So we have to completely boil off the water and get the solid product. After all the water has sprayed, we are finally left with this green colored solid and this is the copper 2 chloride. Next we move into the preparation of copper 1 chloride. For this we need 2 grams of previously made copper 2 chloride and some saturated potassium metabisulfide solution. I have already made a solution of the copper 2 chloride. Now we pour the metabisulfide solution into the copper 2 chloride. Immediately you observe a color change. The solution turned darker. Continuously stir the solution until there is formation of a white colored precipitate. What's happening here is metabisulfide being a reducing agent converts the copper 2 plus to copper 1 plus which precipitates out as copper 1 chloride. This precipitate is very heavy which is almost 4 times more the specific gravity of water. That is why it settles down very fast. You can clearly make out a white suspension in the solution now and that's copper 1 chloride being formed. After stirring for a while, allow it to sit undisturbed. Immediately you see the white precipitate depositing below in the beaker and that is finally done. Now we decant of the supernatant solution and collect the precipitated copper 1 chloride. It is very easy to decant of the supernatant solution as the collected copper 1 chloride is very dense and it has completely settled in the bottom of the beaker as I told you before. Here you can see the white precipitate of copper 1 chloride. Now we will have to wash the precipitate a couple of times with some distilled water to remove any unreacted compounds and other impurities present in the salt. You can easily wash it by adding distilled water and decanting the solution. We have to continue washing the precipitate until the color of the precipitate starts turning darker. That is actually the copper 1 oxide being formed. Now you can see that after washing for a few minutes, the color of the precipitate has turned to a yellow orange color. That means we are done washing now. Now we finally decant of that solution and we are left with some copper 1 oxide. Copper 1 chloride is not stable so we will have to now add some hydrochloric acid into the copper 1 oxide and you can see that white color returning that is the copper 1 chloride and we have to store the copper 1 chloride in hydrochloric acid. I have added some 3 molar hydrochloric acid here and we have to store it like that.
I would like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreon supporters who have financially supported me so that I could get the materials required for doing all these experiments, including this one. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you loved the contents of this video, do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button so that you will get notified about my new videos.